Hello, and welcome to another edition of Wave Lab Workflows. My name is Justin Perkins. Today, we're going to look at some of the many new loudness related features of Wave Lab 12. Uh, there's quite a few to go over. I'm going to try to touch on all of them to some degree. If you haven't uh, noticed, as of today, there's a new update for Wave Lab 12 called 12.0.10, which is a little maintenance update to fix a couple bugs that were noticed, mostly FLAC related. Uh, FLAC files with metadata were having an issue in Wave Lab 12 and a couple other little things. So hopefully you grabbed the maintenance update. And a few people have asked, but all my preferences for Wave Lab 12 are over on the wavelabhelp.com website. So um, you can, of course, migrate your Wave Lab 11 settings over to Wave Lab 12. But if you want to just start where I'm at, you can grab my Wave Lab 12 preferences folder from wavelabhelp.com and, and load in some or all of the preference files that you would like to grab uh, for Wave Lab 12. Because there has been a little, there's been some changes. Some things are different from 11, not too much, but you may want to just grab what I have. So it looks like we have a few people joined us. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the chat. I try to monitor that as best as I can while doing this. And let's get into it with, with some of the loudness-related stuff, again, for Wave Lab 12. I'll have time for a Q&A at the very end. And, of course, if you're on Facebook, you can go to the Wave Lab users group over on Facebook and ask some questions there, some follow-up questions, or, or check out the Wave Lab forum on the Steinberg website. So I'm going to get into it for real now. Probably my favorite new feature of wave lab 12 in general is something that people have been asking for for a while which is loudness matching within the audio montage because as of wave lab 10 i believe we have reference tracks which is this track 2 underneath my main track that has the r reference tracks are a good place to put things like the unmastered mixes or the reference mixes from the mix engineer that have some limiting and loudness, or maybe even a different song that you've mastered for the artist that you want it to be similar to. You know, we're doing a lot of singles these days, so sometimes if I'm mastering a new single for an artist I've worked with, sometimes I'll load in the previous song on a reference track just to, you know, compare. So basically, reference tracks let you monitor something and it skips all of your montage output effects and it skips the master section so you're you're hearing just what's on the reference track very nice little feature of, of wave lab so my whole point is now that we have reference tracks people have been wanting loudness matching within the audio montage because we have smart bypass in the master section but it's honestly not that useful for the way I work in WaveLab and for how a lot of people work. So to do that, there's a few ways to, to do loudness matching in the audio montage now. And there's a few scenarios where you'd want to do it. So I'm going to start by showing you this one where I have a montage that I've been working on uh, in a short EP. And I, as you can see, I have clip effects on each song. I have a limiter on the montage output. So it, it's basically, I think it's, this is actually um, the approved master that went out. So I'm basically done with it. It's more of a piano ambient piece, so it's not super loud. And on the reference track, I copied down, and for those that don't know this trick, I'll just undo this. On the reference track, I copied the source files because this was in the box mastering project, all digital. I copied down the original mixes and I told WaveLab to not include any plugins, volume, or gain adjustments. So now on the reference track, we have the unmastered mixes just as they came in. And as you can see, um, you can show reference tracks or not, but as you can see, there's no gain adjustment being applied to these, whereas I use the meta normalizer, which we'll get to, to adjust the uh, clips on the actual the mastered versions I'm working on. But point being, I'm going to play this any random spot. And I'm playing it, I'm listening. And at any point, I can press this button down here and enable loudness matching. What, the, what that's going to do in this scenario is it's going to lower what I'm hearing out of my speakers or headphones 
to match the unmastered versions. And that, of course, allows you to make a better assessment of what you're doing. Is it actually making it sound better or is it just louder? So this is a loudness match comparison. And of course, in this scenario, it's going to make it make the mastered version quieter just on monitoring, as, um, just on the monitoring side of things. It's not adjusting my plugins or anything. And it's kind of showing me what's going on here with the loudness. Now, there are some settings in the preferences area for loudness matching. You can have a, a ceiling so you don't accidentally blow up your speakers or headphones. You can have a warm-up time, which is basically the window. And if you hover over this, you'll get a little description, a deviation warning. And you can have it reset the gain automatically if it, it does deviate too much. So there's a few preferences that you may want to adjust to your liking. But basically, what I'm doing here is, uh, again, lowering the mastered version to match the unmastered mixes. Now we can go the other direction if you go into the inspector. And... Uh, press this button up here. Now when you play it back, it's going to be it's going to be increasing the unmastered version to match the mastered version that I did. And of course, you want to be you, you can run into situations where it's adding clipping or um, introducing distortion on playback just because of the nature of it, turning a certain file up that might not have the peaks managed as well. So you got to be careful of that, but basically now what it's doing is it's increasing um, the unmastered version to match the mastered version that I came up with. So that's another way to listen to it if, if you want to. So again, you just find that up here and you enable it. So as you can see, they kind of work together. When you enable it down in the reference track, it turns a, a teal blue and up here it's yellow. And if you do it this way, it's the other way around. So. Loudness matching in the audio montage is, is very cool. Um, I'm going to open up a different project where, um, let's see, a different project. Well, basically the point is that sometimes you're going to have the reference quieter versions on here and sometimes you're going to have the louder ones. I did have one queued up here and I got lost in the history. But here's what it might look like if I have the now, in this particular montage, this is kind of a weird uh, abstract jazz piece album, so it looks a little strange. But um, And honestly, the versions I mastered from are not super different than the limited versions. Um, I picked a couple weird ones to show you today. But in this case, you can see on the reference track, I have the Mix Engineer's louder versions. And when I play and compare, you know, it's changing it. Not a, definitely not as much change is happening. So a lot of ways to use this, but again, probably my favorite new feature in WaveLab um, 12 is this loudness matching in the audio montage. A lot of people have requested this over the years and it's, it's finally here. And now that just takes some of the guesswork and, and more manual uh, ways of, of a B comparing or there's obviously some plugins out there that do it, but now we just have it natively built in um, Another area I want to talk about next is the meta normalizer um, those of you that follow These videos know that I like to meta normalize songs before I even start uh, mastering So that's what I did here as you can see um, I loaded them in and then I used the meta normalizer to Get them all on the same page. This is kind of my starting point is um, minus 16 LUFS, but not for the not integrated. It's the top of the loudness range. So basically the loudest parts of each song, similar to maximum short term LUFS, the top of the, the loudest parts of each song are minus 16, which means on a typical song, maybe the integrated loudness is minus 18, minus 20. It really depends on the song. You know, there's no way to even guess but that's where i like to start and of course i do some level automation on the envelopes and all that good stuff but there's some new features um the meta normalizer that i want to show you and to show you the first way the first new feature i'm going to open up a particular montage that um 
this is how I would typically master a single song. It has the main version, the instrumental, and the TV mix. I like to do them all in one montage. Now, when I'm mastering an album, I don't do it this way. I'll master the album. Once the album's approved, then I'll load in the instrumentals and whatnot and render new versions. But for a single, I like to do it this way because it's typically, in a perfect world, you deliver it and they approve it and it's done and they have everything. So point being, um, and before Wave Lab 12, you couldn't do this, but now I like to do this setting and I even have a preset. It's going to normalize the active clip or the selected clip to your desired level. You can, of course, change this to whatever you want. You can even have do integrated if you want to or maximum short term. There's a lot of settings to play with. Um, but my whole point here is now when I press apply, as, as you can see, I'm using this particular new setting of set active set active clips loudness and shift the others by the same amount so this is really handy for again mastering a single and alternate versions because let me press the button it's thinking so now if you look in the clips tab and the pre-gain it adjusted it it analyzed the main version with vocals but it adjusted the instrumental and tv mix by the same amount and that's typically what you want. When I'm mastering alternate versions, assuming the mix comes in at the same level, which doesn't always happen, but hopefully it does, I'm typically using the same gain structure and processing on the instrumentals and TV mix because I want everything else to be the same, you know, if, if um, especially because, you know, the intro of the song typically doesn't have vocals, so, um, you know, I just want the entire gain structure to be the same. So that's a quick way to um, for working with singles and, and alternate versions or a clean version and things like that. Um, so that's a new feature. And then the other way that it comes in handy, um, up until recently, I used to master a lot of library music. Now, this is different than mastering stems, but you could relate it to mastering stems if you wanted to. But this is uh, one song, um, some library music, meaning, you know, background music for TV, film, whatever. So what I have here is five different versions of a song. I have the full version on track one, a, a narrative version, a rhythm only, a 30-second version, and a stinger, you know, all stacked up here. And until Wave Lab 12, when I was mastering something like this, I would have to normalize the first, you know, the full version. I would normalize that to my preferred starting point. And then I have to manually copy and paste the gain to all the other versions, which wasn't a huge deal, but it can get tedious if you're doing like 20 cues and stuff like that. So what you can do for uh, library music mastering, or even in some cases stem mastering, you can use that same approach of um, setting a particular clip to the same loudness or a certain loudness, and then they all shift equally you know they're not they're not getting set to the same loudness they're just getting the same t amount of gain change which you know is really what you want in a stem mastering environment you don't want each stem to be the same loudness you want them to shift accordingly so when i do that and hit apply you can see that you know the full version and all the alternate versions match and then of course when i dial in the, the settings you know i'm muting muting all the other ones, you know, I dial in my settings based on the full mix. And then when I'm happy with that, I render the full mix and then I mute that and render. Uh, that way they're all getting the same gain staging, same gain structure, things like that. So those are, you know, maybe smaller things to some people, but little time savers. Um, and another little feature is uh, peak normalize and shift clips. So let's say, uh, well, I guess... Let's say you want you have a bunch of clips and you want the loudest peak to be a certain level and then you want the other songs to change by that same amount. Again, not setting all the peaks to the same level, that would be this option, but here you can again do that with the peak level, which for me doesn't come in real handy for my type of work, but for someone working with um, already mastered material, you know, trying to do broadcast, sound design, program work, um, that feature could come in handy as well. I guess we'll shift into some more visual things for a moment. Um, there is something I missed in my um, demonstration of WaveLab 12, 12 in general is there is a new 
um, view for, uh, it's easier to show you in the editor right now, but there's a little dial here and then hopefully you can see there's a little dial that shows you the RMS level and some people might find that handy. Let me, let me show you a fully rendered, uh, album. We'll show you what that looks like. I'll open that in the editor and this little dial helps you, um, just kind of view the RMS level within that waveform view. So that's new to WaveLab 12. Some people have been asking for that. You can, of course, change the you know how strong it is and things like that. And you can see it in the audio montage as well. Um, again, this, this would be pre... Well, this is my rendered version, so not a great example. But let's go back to this. This is the working montage. So this, this kind of lets you see the, the RMS levels of... Of each song which can come in handy um, sort of mirrors the peak levels but not always um, zoom to peaks I think this was something that was possible in uh, sonic solution soundblade which is uh, no longer with us end of life but let's look at a good use case for this feature I have a little file set aside for it I actually received this song to master and some people might look at this and say, wow, that's really maxed out and blown up. What am I supposed to do with this? In fact, if I analyze it, the, the integrated LUFS is minus 8.3, which is, you know, not ridiculous, but for some types of music that might be as loud as the mastered version or louder. But my whole point is, we have this zoom to peaks feature, which um, when I press it over here, this yellow looks like a little mountaintop. That's actually going to make the loudest peak um, right at the top. And as you can see, the scale changes on the left side. Let me zoom in on that. Scale changes. So you can see the loudest peak. And it even tells you it flashes and it disappeared. So let me, the loudest peak is uh, plus 5.6. But now I can look at this and say, oh, what, you know, this file is not really a problem because they saved the mix, as you can see down here, as 32-bit float. Um, so that allows for peaks over, over 0 dB. Now, if it was a 24-bit file and looked like that, then these peaks would indeed be chopped off at 0. But this is kind of a quick way to see if this file is workable. Um, it works in the other direction, too. Let me open up this. It works with quieter files, of course. If you have... This would be considered like a somewhat quiet mix file to receive. Um, but if I press this, it just blows up the waveform. Again, it's not changing the loudness of the file at all. It's just uh, giving you a better view. Uh, zoom to peaks is what it's called. Um, again, people have been asking this, especially people that have come over from uh, Soundblade now that it's um, essentially retired. And I think it's a cool new feature. I find myself using it more and more now that I know that it's there. Um, another new feature, um, I think it's loudness related because it's talking about frequencies, the loudness of frequencies, but the rainbow view. Now this is a solo piano piece, so not very exciting. Let me open up a different file. This has a little more going on. Um, but basically this is showing us um, Frequency-based colors, so you can check for sibilance, plosives, um, things like that. Let me try to open up. I actually don't know what this one's going to look like, but it's well. I'll do the whole montage. You can do it in the audio montage view as well. Um, so this this is the project you're looking at here is instrumental, but with a lot of interesting brass and uh, jazz-related type things. So it's pretty. Pretty colorful, but as you can see, you can get a nice spectral view of the waveform. It's called Rainbow. You can, of course, click on the settings dial down here, and you can adjust the colors um, to your liking, the color scale. There's some presets. I think there were some presets recently added for, um, in this particular update that came out today from some users. Of course, you can save your own presets and things like that, but for me, I don't... I'm still getting in the habit of using this. So for me, the default color scheme looks looks really good. Let me try to open up one more um, montage. This I know this this is a typical rock thing with uh, vocals and stuff, so you may see some different colors. But 
I think it's a cool new feature of uh, Wave Lab 12 is the rainbow view. Of course, it's available in the audio editor and in the audio montage. Um, so shifting away from visual stuff, let's get back into some uh, nerdy stuff like numbers and, and stats. Um, there's always been the global analysis, which I'm going to show you at the end because I still really like it. But there's a couple new um, loudness related reports that I want to show you. Let's start with um, the new loudness report, which you're going to find in the analyze tab. And again, it's available in the editor and the audio montage. I'm going to show you in the audio montage. And I'm also going to show you on a montage that's been rendered um, because what it has to do is it has to show you the actual loudness. You know, let's say you have a, a working montage like this. You know, to show you the true loudness, it has to essentially render the audio um, to, to figure out that loudness. It can't just instantly know the loudness of the entire montage or album or EP without crunching the numbers, similar to what you would do if you're rendering the files to, to send off. So it's, it's not a fast process, and it really can't be a fast process when there's plugin processing involved, especially a lot of plugins at 96K. So I'm going to show you on a 96K montage that I've rendered. The only plugin involved is a dither plugin. Um, but right here is the new uh, loudness analysis report. There's a lot of a lot of options in here. I don't think I even have time to go over them all, but you know you can analyze the entire montage. You can analyze selected clips. Um, I like to do ranges because I like to know the loudness of each song when I'm looking at this. You know, if I'm mastering an EP or an album, I don't really want to know the loudness of the entire album, although it's handy and I can add it there. But this is going to give a nice song by song by song breakdown of the loudness. And of course, when this is all done, you can save it as a PDF or HTML. Uh, for some people, for some types of work, I don't do this with if I'm mastering an album or a single or whatever for bands, but if you're doing library um, production mastering or broadcast or something where people, where there's more standards and expectations, you know, you may want to deliver a, a PDF report of, of the loudness of everything that might be part of the job requirement or just something you do um, to add some value to your work. But here's what we're getting here. Um, it just crunched the numbers on that EP. And there's a lot of different things that you can see or not see depending on your liking. But whole range, that's going to be the whole EP, which, again, is nice to know. But what I'm really after is... Um, the loudness and stats of each song. So I can see my digital and true peaks. I can see the integrated loudness. I can add things. I guess I sort of have it to my liking, but I can add the RMS level. Um, it's showing us any DC offset, showing us the left um, balance, loudness range, things like that. So a lot of useful stuff in this report. Um, you can you can kind of dumb it down and 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 look at it that way, or you can go up to three decimal places. I like two decimal places. Um, you can see the duration if, if that helps. You know, that helps me see that this is the whole EP and these are the individual songs. So a lot of different things here. You can hide, you know, obviously hide, hide the options and things like that. Um, and then once you have, you know, whatever you like, you can export it. And you can have it be a PDF, a text file, um, a bunch of different things. For me, PDF is my preferred format. And you can have it be more of like a table layout. Um, I didn't particularly care for that, but some people might. But when I press OK, you know, this is, you can dress it up to your liking by making a HTML. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but this is the basic numbers that it spits out. So it's kind of nice to have this data again for certain types of projects. So I'm not sending this to every band I work with because they're not going to know what to do with these numbers. And if anything, it just asks, um, raises more questions and whatnot. So, but again, certain types of work, this is a really cool feature to have is the loudness report um, in various formats. So again, um, something I tend to do after it's rendered, although if you want to 
if you have time or you're not using a lot of plugins, you can do it in your source montage um, just as well. But as you as you can see, it's going to take a while, and it's not really the fault of WaveLab. It's just it's just the nature of having to process all those plugins involved. So uh, a few different ways to use the loudness report, but again, very very cool new feature. I've actually been wanting this for a while. There's a few other programs that have been doing it, and it's cool that, that WaveLab um, finally offers it. Um, on a similar, uh, I guess a similar topic, similar um, subject, is a new visual analysis of audio montages and, and audio files, too. I like to work in the audio montage, so a lot of what I'm showing you is going to be in the audio montage. But um, this visual analysis is pretty cool. Now, again, you can analyze the rendering, but that's going to take a little while. To, maybe actually not in this montage because there's no plugins involved besides Dither. But if, again, if you're in your um, source montage with all the with with all your active plugins, um, it's going to take a while to analyze the rendering. So. Um, I typically don't press that button ever, I, and, and that's fine. I either do it on the unmastered versions, like you see here, or after I've rendered my montage, which um, this is actually an entirely different project, so don't worry. But let's say I want to see some loudness stats of, of this montage. I can do this, and I can add integrated loudness. Now, of course, that's just going to be a straight line because integrated is the entire program. Um, and I can hover my mouse over it and see that the entire EP ended up being minus 9.5 LUFS. I can add momentary, which is the purple, and you can, again, scroll your mouse and, and follow the line if, if that um, is useful to you. Um, short-term loudness. For me, short-term LUFS or loudness is one of the more important measurement tools because... You know, we want, we, okay, I shouldn't say we want, but it, it's, I think it's great when music has dynamics, you know, when the verses are not as loud as the choruses. And as you can see, this, this, this particular project had a, let's close this, had a quieter song and a song that has a quieter bridge and a quieter intro. So I like when music has some dynamic range and whatnot. So let me get back to this, but the short term LUFS, um, Reading is pretty useful to me. It's cool to see the the green line here. Um, there's some hot spots, and you can jump to them. I'll show you that in a moment. But these little red arrows are going to be hot spots. Um, some dynamic information as well. So there's a lot of information you can can gather from this new window. And I'm going to make sure my speakers are muted. But yeah, you can play back some of these hot spots, whether they're peak hot spots in this section, which I'm going to turn off, or RMS hotspots or short-term LUFS hotspots and um, it does a little bit of pre and post roll that way you can check some of these spots and you know see if it happens to be distorted or too a little crunchy or actually you know just too too you can hear the limiter working too much or or whatever it may be it's a quick way to find and and, and check all those kind of hot spots again whether they're true peaks or loud RMS spots, moments, and things like that. So, um, again, WaveLab 12 is still fairly new. I'm still learning ways to, to utilize this, but let me open a song in the audio editor. And you can see you have it, have it here as well. Let me get back to Waveform View, Analyze. So, just, you know, WaveLab already had a loudness sim a uh, more basic, similar loudness tab you can look at, similar to the spectrogram view and whatnot. But this is just, I think, very well done um, loudness view of, you know, whether it's files in the audio editor or um, unmastered mixes in your audio montage, things like that. I just think this is a really really great way of looking at audio and just kind of analyzing. Of course, you always want to use your ears, but it's a good way to confirm what you're hearing or, or, or help gather data from another perspective if you're having trouble with anything or, or things like that. Um, and again, you can drag your cursor to really get moment-by-moment um, -moment detail on some of this stuff. Now, I did want to 
at least touch on the um, global analysis report because I still like this and I still use it. Um, and it, when you're done looking at this, you can just hit the trash can and it and it goes away. And again, this is you know there's some other little features I guess I should mention too is how much do you want the waveform dimmed? You know, it can go from none to slightly to moderate to, to very dimmed. So there's a lot of, there's so many little um, features in here, including um, curve smoothing, um, spectral profile. You can just get a, you know, a different view on that as well. So a lot of cool things. And again, it took me a moment to figure this out, but you just hit the trash can and, and you're, you're back to normal on, on uh, your views and stuff like that. So the other thing that I wanted to mention is the original um, loudness report, which is really just, it's just in the audio editor, but I used to use this a lot. Like when I would render my, my master montage and I'd render that to a new file to bake in the processing before I go any further. You know, I, this is still a quick and useful. It's a little slower than the other one, but you know, this is going to tell you your, you know, slightly less information. For some people, it could be a little uh, less overwhelming to look at it this way. But this is the entire file. You got your RMS readings, your uh, LUFS readings, and stuff like that. Peaks, um, things like that. So, I just wanted to mention that this is still there for those that want to use it and I think it's still a useful report but those are really the main um, new uh, features of, of WaveLab related to the, the loudness stuff and again um, reference tracks being the main in my opinion the main one because um, you know there's plugins that help with with a being before and after but now that it's natively built in it's just so nice to to be able to compare what you what you're doing to what you started with, or what the mix engineer might have done for their reference version, or a, a previous song that you mastered for somebody, or you know the same, and it it could also be just random you know r random references. I did it in an earlier many years ago, a couple of years ago now, but you can actually set it up so your streaming service of choice is routed to a reference track, and your mono you know you can play. A streaming service and have the reference track in WaveLab be capturing that input so you can write within WaveLab compare what you're working on to a streaming service um, you know I have a monitor controller so I don't need to do that but it's there so if anyone has any questions um, you know feel free to ask them in the live chat I'll try to address them now um, and if not as I mentioned we have the wavelabhelp.com um, Website has all my settings and preferences. You can rewatch all these videos. Um, and the WaveLab users group on Facebook is a good place to ask um, questions. So now that WaveLab 12 is out, there's just tons of tons of topics to cover. So we're going to be doing them every month now for the rest of the year, and um, in more detail, of course, just because there are so many more topics. So it's an exciting time to be using WaveLab if you're just starting. Um, so feel free to be on those groups asking questions. Watch for the new live streams every month, um, topics. I am going to get back to some interviews. I was at NAM a few weeks ago. I ran into a couple of WaveLab users that offered to be on and do an interview version. So there'll be more interviews. But for the next few months, there's so many great new topics um, to dive into um, with WaveLab 12. Loudness being one of the main ones. Of course, there's ARA2 support and a whole bunch of other great stuff so i do appreciate you watching this and we'll see you next month